Yes, sir. All set. Just a minute. Okay, sir, we'll start uh, today's uh, inaugural function. Uh, dear participants and respected guests, uh, Professor S. N. Deshmukh, sir, and Professor Philbert. Uh, on behalf of Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, uh, Dr. Baba Sabambedkar Maratwada University, Aurangabad, uh, please my, accept the greetings and a very warm welcome to AICT Atal Academy's Faculty Development Program on Current Trends in Internet of Things. Uh, I'm very happy to share with you that we have received good participation from um, uh, all uh, Pan India, and we have uh, and the participants are having good exposure to electronics, communication, and computer science streams. Uh, friends, uh, we are happy to have a very vibrant innovators with us, Professor S. N. Deshmukh, uh, head of Department of Computer Science and uh, IT Department, Dr. Baba Sabambedkar Maratwada University, Aurangabad. Uh, and, and Professor Phil Bajono from Curtin University, Malaysia. Uh, let me at the at the outset, let me first introduce Professor S. N. Deshmukh, sir, uh, with you all. Uh, Dr. S. N. Deshmukh, uh, Professor S. N. Deshmukh is currently working as a professor and head Department of Computer Science and IT, Dr. Baba Sabambed Kramaratwada University, Aurangabad. Uh, he is also catering vital responsibilities of innovation, incubation, and linkages as a director. Uh, he also worked as a director of uh, internal quality assurance cell IQAC, uh, director of university network and in, uh, information center, director of vocational education and training. Uh, he, he was chief coordinator of spoken tutorial project of IIT Bombay, uh, as well as he was uh, a coordinator of pre PhD examination 2014. Conducted by Dr. Baba Sabamakar Maratwada University, Aurangabad. Uh, looking at his uh, noteworthy contribution, uh, uh, contribution he has contributed significantly at national level assignments and uh, assignments and important institution facilitated by him was AICT, that is All India Council of uh, Technical Education, in the capacity of a deputy director of e-governance. Uh, he is um, um, a NAC peer committee member expert uh, and he is also a member of enhancing quality assurance in south asia that is eqasa work group of european union uh, he also got the scholarship of research excellence program under erasmus mundus program uh, spain funded by european union uh, he has received uh, grants about 2 million for his research project sanctioned by aict university grant commission uh, and other um, uh, uh, agencies. Uh, he has been very instrumental in the research guidance and successfully guided uh, uh, MTech uh, CSE dissertation, Amphil computer science dissertation, and PhD uh, stu uh, students as well. And uh, he has uh, also uh, has more than uh, 60 plus articles in peer reviewed and index journal. Um, uh, he also has one uh, Indian patent also on his name. Uh, he is a member of IEEE, IET, CSI, I, IS, Indian Science uh, Congress, uh, and uh, uh, many more uh, institutional bodies, professional bodies. Uh, with this brief uh, introduction, now I request uh, Professor S. N. Deshmukh sir to please uh, give his opening remark to all the participants and the department uh, and the departmental address as well. Professor S. N. Deshmukh. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pravin, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. I welcome Professor Philbert uh, and uh, Professor Pravin for this workshop, who is a host. Pravin is a host and uh, chief guest, the uh, Professor Philbert. 
and all the participation the participants for this uh, iot workshop uh, as a head of the department uh, again uh, i would like to give you the brief regarding our department maybe in 5 minutes because everybody is eager to uh, listen uh, today's chief guest uh, professor philbert uh, our department basically started in 1989 it was started uh, in a small room then uh, later on after 4 5 years it was shifted to a bigger place that uh, the, what we can say uh, it was earlier a canteen and then it was renovated as a department where professor pravin also has studied for a year or something and then uh, later on in 2001 we shifted to the uh, the building our department basically started working uh, effectively in 97 98 when all the recruitments were done by government of maharashtra with the fundings given by government of maharashtra and now in this last uh, 2020 four years we have developed ourselves and uh, we are the best department in all universities at least in maharashtra and one of the renowned department in india and abroad also the uh, research work in our department uh, is started initially with uh, image processing sound recognition then uh, later on it was uh, um, human computer interaction lab also as ugc has sanctioned and the professor merotra got that project and later on professor bharti uh, started working on that as well we have got some other areas like artificial intelligence geospatial uh, networking uh, ge- geospatial and um, remote sensing as well as data science and also many so every teacher has got a specific uh, uh, master area in his and where he is doing a research professor pravin is also working in image processing as well as in iot here he is setting up a lab of iot and started working in his all research is in iot so uh, the department is catering to the needs of the university also we are uh, uh, helping university in uh, all it sort of things as well as in the administrative thing the contribution of the department in getting the nac accreditation is also uh, remarkable and uh, all my fa- all the faculty members in our department are proactive and working hard for the development of the university just maybe some of the participants i have seen and professor philbert is also so i just wanted to give the brief uh, of our department so again i welcome on behalf of dr baba saheb ambedkar maratwada university to all the participants and also the chief guest and the speaker for this inauguration function professor philbert as uh, i'll just give a brief because iot is the today's workshop this is the second workshop in the series of three first workshop we completed last month on uh, artificial intelligence now iot is a second in the series of aict fdps and i am very happy to uh, inaugurate all this uh, this workshop and uh, i definitely am confident that all the participants definitely will get bunch full of knowledge in iot which is a upcoming area now uh, every business now it demands now iot just i was reading and listening a professor uh and he was just telling that later on in coming ages maybe in 3 4 5 years your input media just like our input units of uh, what we have studied in our computer engineering or computer science uh, theories is uh, maybe keyboard and mouse and all now the eye lenses the lenses that we put into the eye that can be uh, later on Uh, the input media where from where you can control so many things alex and all what we are uh, experiencing a lot or uh, even the children knows about it they are experiment experimenting on this and now all this input media will go definitely to the instrument operations and which needs the iot things so definitely i must congratulate the professor pa- pravin to make this opportunity to the uh, to this participants available by applying to the funding uh, to aict getting aict approval because one week aict approval uh, uh, regarding the workshop along with the funding is not a easy joke is easy task and definitely he has taken an effort so i even request the participants to take advantage of it uh, develop your expertise in the field of iot practice it and be ready for the future challenges so this is again uh, this is all what from my side 
again i um, welcome you on behalf of department of computer science and it dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university and wish you all the best for the workshop and again i thank professor filbert for taking out time and joining this and i hope his guidance will definitely your guidance will definitely help the participants so thank you thank you very much from my side over to professor pravin uh thank you very much sir uh for your words of appreciation and guidance uh you have been a, a sub, uh, support system for us uh, every time that you have take uh, give us an opportunity to apply uh, various funding uh, agencies and we tried our best to uh, contribute towards the success of the department uh, friends uh, let me take this opportunity to introduce a special guest for this opening ceremony my research collaborator professor filbert jorno uh, professor filbert uh, earned his uh, be engineering uh, be degree in electrical engineering and me in telecommunication engineering from university of indonesia depok in 2007 and 2009 respectively he earned his phd degree in electrical and uh, electronic com, uh, electronics engineering from university of west australia perth in 2017 uh, currently he is with the department of electrical and computer engineering curtin university malaysia uh, his research uh, interest includes uh, signal processing for communication biomedical engineering uh internet of things machine learning and machine learning and applications its application pattern recognition as well uh, he serves as an um, associate editor of ieee access review editor of frontiers of signal processing uh, and editor in chief in newly established journal on green intelligent systems and applications uh with his research uh, accolades uh, he has secured a uh, competitive research grants from both national and international funding agencies uh, and he is also a senior member of ieee so um, on behalf of team of uh, this fdp i welcome professor philbert um, philbert and request him to uh, to please address the participants on smart connected words a data driven society uh, professor philbert Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone, respected colleges, students, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, am I audible, Dr. Profit? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you. First of all, thank you very much for uh, Professor Sachin and also Professor Pravin who has invited me, and also to uh, Dr. Baba Saheb at Bekar Marathwada University for hosting this. Uh, uh this uh event okay uh so in this talk i will talk about uh, smart connected world a data driven uh, society and then uh this is the outline of my talk so please give me one minute to introduce uh, the team university malaysia and then after that i will uh, go through the history of society 5.0 and then i will go to the understanding society 5.0 digital twin and also applications of data science because uh, as you know as you may know that society 5.0 is related to data so i think we need to uh, pay attention to the applications of data science i will give three applications first in the agriculture so actually in this agriculture uh, we are working on this we are working um, uh with uh, banastali vidyapit university so under the asean india collaborative r and d uh, grant so we are doing the uh, actually part of the agriculture 5.0 where we use robots to um, discriminate uh, wheat and crop with uh, multi spectral uh, images and then the second application will be in the education Uh, society so uh, uh, yeah as you may know that data uh, can play um, important part in education 
and also in the oil and gas uh, uh, industry, in petroleum industry. And then finally, I will conclude uh, this uh, this talk. All right. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this is the picture of our campus, so Curtin Malaysia. Yeah. So our campus is uh, the Curtin's largest international campus and global hub in Asia. Uh, and actually, uh, Curtin University has five campuses around the world. So one is the main campus in uh, Perth, and then uh, there are four offshore campuses, including the one in Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai, and uh, Mauritius. Uh, actually, in Malaysia, we have uh, three faculties and two schools. We have Faculty of Engineering and Science, Faculty of Business, Faculty of Humanities and Health Sciences, Curtin Malaysia Graduate School, and also School of Professional Advancement and Continuing uh, Education. Um, these are the achievements of Curtin as a whole, uh, not only in Malaysia, but also um, uh, the whole uh, campuses of Curtin in year 2020 and 2021. Okay, now we uh, come to the history of the industrial and society revolution because they are, I think, uh, they are related to industrial and society revolutions. So when we talk about the society 1.0, we refer to the hunting society where humans live in groups and hunted for food. Okay, they begin to develop the civilization, which uh, was regarded as the start of the cognition revolution. So this one, human will begin the cognitive uh, revolution. And then continue to the society uh, 2.0. So society 2.0 is called agrarian society, where humans have started to use land for food and begin to develop uh, science. So uh, this one, they do not, um, live in group anymore, and then they are not nomadic anymore, and then they, they, uh, they were settled in the one place, and then they built, uh, they built science here. And then coming to the third society, which is called industrial society, uh, society 3.0 emerged as the population increase, and the land becomes scarce. So human, because they have developed the science in society 2.0, they started to think, how can I do? What, what can I do? How can I uh, <clears throat> keep living in this uh, era because of the, um, the number of humans uh, uh, was increasing at the time, right? So they actually, they had enough expertise to design basic machineries and later evolved into larger industry. At this time, Uh, of industrial uh, revolution. So we start from industrial revolution 1.0. So this one is marked by the invention of steam machine, and then it is continued to uh, 2.0, uh, which was marked by the invention of electricity, uh, which enabled heavy and uh, chemical uh, industries. Uh, and then we just start to the society 4.0 when the internet was launched. So when the internet was launched, the society moved to information society known as society 4.0. Uh, actually, this has influence on the industries as well. So um, we can see that the industries, they use semi-automatic machines. And then we, this one, this era is regarded as the industrial revolution 3.0 here. And then in in the future, maybe uh, in the uh, in the development with the development of the computer and the science, so we develop the machine learning and artificial intelligence. So where the use of machine learning and AI uh, has been uh, employed here. And then now, how about the future? How about the future? So currently, actually, we are in the between. Uh, of the society 4.0. So we can call, uh, in my term, we are in the society 4.5 actually, right? So actually we are not yet 
and um, arrived to the society 5.0 here. So actually the government of Japan has predicted that in the future, um, the society will uh, depend heavily on data. So it is called a data-driven society here. And then uh, we mark this as society 5.0. So actually, what's the difference between uh, uh, society 5.0 and society uh, you can get society 5.0 relies on the mostly relies on the data and also on the people, right? So this one is for people focus actually. Uh, okay, so this is one of the illustrations in society 5.0. So you can see that in the future, IoT will connect all people and things. And currently the IoT just connect the things actually, right? But in the future, IoT will connect all people and things. And then we will use drones as well and also robots, right? And also we will use artificial intelligence heavily, right? For every applications here, for every application. So actually, uh, uh, society 5.0, Zero, it will fall, especially for the elder people or the other um, uh, other uh, societies. Uh, okay, so when we compare, when we compare the uh, society 4.0 and society 5.0, we can see that currently the data are already stored in cloud, but you can see the cloud. The Clouds are supplier. So, for, um, we in the university we don't know the 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 health record of our students, right? We don't know the health record of our students because we don't know. Actually, um, uh, maybe they have um, uh, like uh, uh, asthma, or maybe they have uh, one of them. They have a very uh, uh, like a uh, Heart, heart uh, problem, heart issues, right? We don't know actually because we cannot retrieve the data from the hospital. Okay, so in the future, in the society 5.0, the data will be combined together. And then uh, it is called as the big data because it, uh, the database will, uh, will be um, coming from, from many, many sources, right? Many sources and then in the future, we can we can uh, collect the the information using the artificial intelligence. So in the future, we know your habit actually, yeah. How we can design a good education for uh, maybe one student, right? One student. So how we can um, solve his problem? For example, he has. We know actually later in the future. We we know uh, what problems he has actually. For example, he has health problem. So we can use AI, we can use the data here to analyze uh, the, uh, his need, right? To analyze his need, and then we can give the solution. So actually, uh, the, the definition of society 5.0 is similar to uh, uh, CPS and also um, IoT, right? So actually, society 5.0 is emerging between cyberspace and physical space. But the difference is we include the people here. We include the people. So you can see that the vision of society 5.0 reframes two relationships. The first is the relationship between technology and society. And then the second is technology mediated relationship between individuals and society. So you can see that humans or society plays an important role in society 5.0 here. The basic scheme is um, actually more or less the same as the previous one. So that are collected from the real world and then it is, uh, they are processed by computers and then results is being applied to the real world. Yeah, for example, we have uh, air conditioning system which keeps the room at desired temperature. But at this scale, the air conditioning system doesn't doesn't know the situation, the situation of the people, right? The condition of the people. Yeah, in the future, 
the air conditioning system they have um those is, uh it has uh data right it has data so maybe uh one of the um uh, one of our family member has asthma right when he comes to the room so the air conditioning system will adjust the temperature yeah it will increase the temperature higher so that uh, the person will feel comfort comfortable right okay so it's i think yeah the main difference is that um, it has the data and also it has the uh, knowledge to to um, adjust uh, the the system uh, by the um, um, people um, uh, needs right yeah as i mentioned that it is more than that it is more than the iot actually so society 5.0 will have to spread throughout society in an integrated fashion. And then um, actually we require comfort in all aspects of life, including energy, transport, medical care, shopping, education, work, leisure, and so on. So actually they are all connected. Yeah. So energy system will be connected to transport system, medical care, and so on, right? And then data are per process by sophisticated IT system as IT 5.0. Sorry, perhaps I need to uh, turn off the video because it it is heavy raining here. And so yeah. Uh, okay, I will continue a bit. Um, so actually, society 5.0 will directly shape our action and behavior. Yeah, society 5.0 will feature an iterative cycle in which data are gathered, analyzed, and then converted into meaningful information, which is then applied in the real world. Moreover, the cycle operates at a society-wide level. So this one is the important uh, part. So the society 5.0 will work at a society-wide uh, level. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, summary, actually, the difference between Society 5.0 and Society 4.0. In Society 4.0, we still include human for taking the information, for extracting the information, and also to make decision here, right? And then in Society 4.0, we, we actually um, pass the task to the system, the smart system here, using the artificial uh intelligence here yeah. okay and then the system will extract the data into the information and then from the information it will give you knowledge or model of the uh, uh problem of interest our problem of interest and then after that we can get the the solution okay uh how about the technical interpretation of society 5.0 so perhaps we have heard about the cyber physical social, social systems or cpss and also human computer interaction so actually they are all the technical interpretation of society 4.0 so cyber physical social system has similar uh, concept so this one is actually cyber physical system plus the social social network or social uh, we can say social contributions right and this is the uh, structure of the CPSS. Yeah, we have three layers: the physical layer, cyber layer, and also social layer. Um, we start at the physical world. Physical world um, are connected to the cyber uh, layer through the sensors and also actuators, and also from cyber layer to social layers, uh, it is connected through the human machine uh, interaction. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, several supporting technologies and then we can see we have a wireless sensor networks 5g and 6g the current uh, communication system cannot handle uh, the data the huge data and also big data itself so later we will see uh, what uh, big data is right and then also we have artificial intelligence and also virtual and augmented uh, reality. Uh, yeah, so 
as I mentioned before, that um, the Society 5.0 will connect all aspects of life, right? So it includes energy, transportation, water, healthcare, public security, and distribution. So maybe um, some some of you wonder uh, what's the relation between the transport and healthcare. So in Society 5.0, for example, we want to send someone from home to hospital, right? And then we need to know the condition of the traffic, right? So for example, the, the, the person is uh, in danger, yeah, the life of the person in danger. So we need to uh, go to the hospital as soon as possible. So actually uh, we can take the data, we can take the data uh, from the cyberspace, from the big data, and then we analyze the traffic. So we, can, we, we know which route gives you the, the fastest uh, time to reach the hospital, for example, like that. Uh, the Society 5.0 is related to Digital Twin. Perhaps some of you have known this, Digital Twin. So actually, Digital Twin is a virtual copy of the real world system, which is brought to digital world. So the history of Digital Twins uh, originated from Apollo program of NASA. So at that time, two identical spacecrafts were designed and then one spacecraft was launched into orbit while another was on land. So when there was a space, so the engineers could model the way in which the replica was repaired and give the results to the crew in outer space. So actually they know what happens actually, and then they can give the, uh, the solution to the crew in outer space. You can uh, imagine that when the, the, the uh, officers on land, they don't know the structure, they don't know the structure of the spacecraft. So what happens when they give wrong uh, solution, for example, right? And then uh, the concept of digital twin is um, like this. So actually it's quite simple. So we have the two sides, right? The real system and also the replica system here. And then the virtual replica system is equipped with machine learning artificial uh, solutions so that and then the real system will uh, deliver the data the real data obtained from the sensors to the replica system here so the users here will use the virtual replica system to analyze the real the real system right and then after that the decision obtained may be transferred back to the real system to be um, uh to be realized through the actuators here okay so actually the point here in the digital twin is that users interact with the digital twin so users do not interact with the real system but only to the virtual replica system okay so uh example of um uh digital twin maybe uh is uh traffic congestion to solve the traffic congestion yeah, so because the traffic congestion is related to poor public security, for example, and then related to poor water infrastructure and also illegal parking and so on, right? So I have one scenario here, okay? I have one scenario here. So suppose that a bus here, okay, is carrying some gas, right? The IPs to give talk, yeah, in a very special event, yeah, at the meeting venue here, right? And then suddenly there is a roadblock, okay, and it creates traffic jam, yeah, heavy traffic jam actually. So the question is, which alternative route will get the passengers, the VIP passengers, to their destination on time, right? Uh, okay. So the digital twin, the digital twin model of roads here, has been built. We, we assume that the system our digital twin has been built and then the the digital twin knows this model the root model yeah the root model for example this one is the is the uh, the meeting venue here okay so many sensors are installed along the road already and then the data from sensors are transferred to the twin yeah so it's transferred to the twin from the sensors here and then uh, as well as inputs from the society here because this one is society 5.0 we need the inputs from the society here okay 
So the input from the society can be obtained through social media. Yeah, for example, yeah, someone may report that there is uh, maybe uh, another traffic jam or maybe uh, there is a um, uh, car accident. Yeah, in the next block, right? So that it may create a delay or another traffic jam in the traffic, right? And then the system will take account. Yeah, all the inputs, all the inputs. And then it learned using the input, and then it will it, it it can give you the route, the best route, yeah, the fastest route to bring the passengers to the meeting venue here. Yeah. The solution will be sent to the driver uh, of this, this bus, right? And then the driver knew knows uh, which route, which route uh, he will take actually. Okay, so this is one of the of the um, use of the uh, digital twin in uh, transportation the future uh, okay now as the conclusion we know that data is king so everything we rely on data yeah we rely on the data and that's why we need data science actually so it is related to the data science yeah so society 5.0 is only a jargon but the technical implementation is the data science actually so uh, actually this is my research area in the data driven society so i divided it into four um, smaller uh, areas okay, which are communication wireless communication including 5g and 6g and artificial intelligence and also sensors hci and iot and also smart smart system and then in this talk, I will I will try to uh, share two uh, three of my um, my research in the area of uh, sensors here, yeah, for uh, sensors and artificial intelligence. So um, yeah, the first one is the agriculture, as I mentioned before. So um, we are doing the agriculture 5.0 for uh, discriminating wheat and and uh, crop. Okay. So, but before I will talk about the agriculture 4.0. So actually, this one is called as the data-driven agriculture, or similarly, uh, agriculture uh, 4.0 smart farming or uh, digital farming. So they are synonyms. Yeah, and then agriculture 4.0 include the telematics. It means that we need to have the communication telecommunication system here. And also, it includes the data management and also precision agriculture. Okay, the precision agriculture itself can be defined as the application of modern information technologies to provide, process, and analyze multi source data of high spatial and temporal resolution for decision making and operations in the management of crop uh, production. Right, so the point here is decision making. Right, uh, so before before that we know the traditional approach of agriculture where farmers go to the fields and they check the status of their crops and make decisions based on their experience so it, the traditional approach has many problems such as efficiency sustainability and affordability right and then for the modern approach we use iot yeah we use sensors we use data collection from farming elements and also big data but currently i don't think we have big data yet because we a big uh, big data should have five fees component here. Yeah, start from the volume. Yeah, we start from the terabyte range petabyte and the velocity of the data variety, velocity and valorization, right? To have uh, the data should have five points, five positions we call it as uh, big data. Uh, okay. So what's the difference between uh, agriculture 4.0 and agriculture 5.0? This is the the the, the uh, difference yeah, when we use the unmanned and autonomous equipment for the agriculture 5.0. Yeah, it means that we can use robots and also uh, AI here. So this is the steps right, for agriculture 5.0. Yeah, so we have the crops, and then in the crops we we install some sensors. Here, yeah, the sensor will give you data, and then start in the platform. Yeah, and then the data will be analyzed using AI, and then the data will give you decision, and decision should be realized through the actuators. 
yeah, then the actuators will give you another data as well, right? So this is a closed loop system which can uh, handle the, uh, for example, your, your rice, rice field. Okay, so uh, next is data science and education. So the application, we have six applications here yeah, for the data science. So we can predict the student's academic performance. We can predict student academic procrastination. This one is how you handle the problematic students, for example, how to solve their problems, right? So uh, yeah, we, we can know their habits, right? They always, for example, they always play games or they will always um, uh, watch movies, something like that. So we can handle the, uh, the problem. And also we can predict the future jobs based on the students' um, academic um, uh, performance, right? And also so students is for students. Right. Next in the petroleum industry. So actually uh, in the oil and gas platforms, we have many sensors installed in the system, right? The question is how can we in the in identify failure in sensor in oil and gas platforms. So one of the things we propose, so we use data collected by other sensors to model sensors of interest. So from this, we can get the residual, the residual yeah, between the model, the predicted model, and also the actual data collected from the sensors to understand the problem of the sensor yeah so we have actually we have identified we have identified three problems related to noise and bias of the sensors right so actually for example this one is the the uh, sensors placed in the one of device of the uh, of the uh, oil and gas platform actually the data the data were obtained from the real the real oil and gas platform but because of the um, uh, agreement we cannot we cannot mention the name of the company here so actually we have we we installed uh, six six um, sensors for example here and then we want to observe the sensor number six from the uh, performance of sensor number one until sensor number five. Yeah, and then we can uh, use the uh, regression method, or maybe we can use uh, artificial neural network to get the performance of the to get data of the of the uh, sensor number six here. And then after that, the actual data obtained by the so this is the result of histograms of residuals yeah and then this is for the non faulty sensor we, we can see that uh, this one is very gaussian with the mean here the histogram. and then for the faulty bias here when we add bias to the uh, uh, result here so we can see that the mean is shifted quite large by around one right and then the the <clears throat> the spread or variance is still the same here right and then when the sensor is contaminated by noise normal distribution noise you can see that the uh the mean is shifted but a bit shifted yeah compared to the bias yeah so we know so this uh this sensor is contaminated by noise by the normal distribution noise and about the uniform distribution noise we can see that the shift will be will be higher than the than the normal distribution noise and also the spread the variance and standard deviation is uh, much larger than the uh, uh, the bias and and normal distribution distribution noise so actually um yeah uh, the conclusion here is that um, future society, whatever it is, right? Whatever application here, will heavily depend on data. So based on the data, we can we can analyze whatever we want, actually. And then we have, of course, we have some interesting challenges, including the safety and security, 
privacy and ethical issues, interdependence and, and compatibility. Okay, so these are the references of this talk. So three of them, I think, uh, um, taken from my, my papers, my current so uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, explanation you may uh, with the paper. And that's all for my talk. Thank you very much. Dr. Prafit, give back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Philbert. Uh, uh, let me let me have uh, uh, some questions from the participants if they have in their mind uh, before going to the next. Uh, you can raise your hands so that I can unmute yourself, you, and you can talk to the of the expert if you have any questions in that case let me see the chat window also so uh yeah so okay so there are no questions yet so uh thank you professor Philbert, uh, for uh, your talk and uh, I, i'm happy that your talk has uh, has opened various avenues to the participants to take their work ahead uh, in the area of uh, IoT, uh, which will appreciate uh, further towards Society 5.0. Uh, with this, uh, friends, we are uh, at the end of this inaugural ceremony of uh, AICT Atal FDP on current trends in uh, IoT. I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to uh, Professor S. N. Deshmukh for his valuable time, guidance, and the words of encouragement. Uh, my heartfelt thanks uh, goes to the collaborator, my research collaborator, Professor Philbert, uh, for accessing my, uh, for accepting my invitation and being here. Uh, and he has delivered a nice talk on uh, and, uh, uh, talk. And uh, this session was very important onto a smart connected world. Uh, thank you, Professor Philbert. I am sure that uh, this bond uh, which we had. Uh, in between our universities uh, will be cherished forever. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Bharti uh, Gauri, Professor Ramesh Manza, Professor Baskar Sati for their unconditional support throughout the uh, formulating proposal as well as uh, uh, to come into this particular uh, time. Uh, their, their support was unconditional. Uh, I would like to thank the university authorities uh, for, proving, uh, for providing the necessary infrastructure uh, and uh, the team of University Network and Inform uh, Information Center for their support and making us available with the platform for conduction of all the sessions. Uh, at the end, I will take this opportunity to, um, to thank all the participants uh, uh, attending this particular faculty development program on current trends in IoT. Uh, please note that uh, you will receive all your updates about the meeting links, recorded session tools, notes, presentation, examinations will be into the classroom only. So the Google Classroom is only the point of contact for all your uh, needs. Uh, in case if you come across with any difficulty as such, you please let me know that I can address to your uh, uh, queries properly. Uh, one more thing that uh, Professor Philbert yesterday has shared the presentation uh, with me. So I'm going to make it available uh, to the participant uh, with the consent of Philbert that uh, this is, so this, this presentation will help them to proceed further uh, into their uh, research careers and so that they can build some of the application on top uh, in the special context to society 5.0. Okay, so friends, uh, we are at the end of this session. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Professor Philbert. Thank you, Professor Sachin Deshmukh, sir, uh, for being here uh, uh, for this inaugural function of uh, uh, current trends in IoT. Our next session goes uh, by 12 noon. Uh, and the link will be available to you into the classroom by 11:50. Uh, so please uh, check your classroom for the regular updates. So thank you, thank you, Philbert. Thank you, Sachin Deshmukh sir. Thank you, all the participants. We'll end up this session now. Yes, thank you. Thank you.
so okay thank you pravin thank you sir thank you very much so we'll ending up this meeting now yes